Inflation is killing us. Let's talk about it. First, let's discuss inflation and how serious it is. We need to be rock solid in our belief that inflation is one of the worst financial phenomena we will face. Second, we'll chat about how we collectively can kill it. And third, we'll discuss what you individually can do to prevail against it. Inflation is your mortal enemy. Inflation is is trending now. It's in the headlines. It's in the news. People are talking about it. But I've been talking about it for years. In episode two of this podcast, which you can listen to at retirementship.com slash two, was published back on January 11th of 2021, and I asserted publicly then that our principal problem was inflation, that the rising cost of living is the biggest problem that we face, especially for those going into retirement, that it was not the ups and downs of the market or bear markets or recessions or any of that, but that inflation is the biggest problem. And what was inflation that year when I released that? Well, in 2020, the year right before that episode was released, the annual inflation was 1.23%. We were coming off a decade of inflation under 2% per year, and yet I was still warning people about it. And many of my clients can assert that I was speaking to them about inflation years before that. As legendary financial advisor Nick Murray put it, inflation is your mortal enemy. It is the destroyer of your long-term purchasing power and thus of your long-term savings. All of that was before the COVID pandemic and the trillions of dollars in subsequent stimulus. I was warning people in the summer of 2020 that the government cannot just print trillions of dollars in money without that chicken coming home to roost. Eventually, we would see high inflation to make up for it. And I was concerned about all the people stuck in CDs and bonds and low-interest, low-growth instruments that would be left behind when inflation eventually ballooned. Milton Friedman, the famous economist, said it best when he said, Inflation is just like alcoholism. In both cases, when you start drinking or when you start printing too much money, the good effects come first. The bad effects only come later. The stimulus money was nice when it was coming in. I enjoyed it. It helped many families. and But now we are going to pay for it. But it isn't just the rampant inflation we're experiencing now. General inflation is toxic. And while much of the discussion these days is focused on the short-term inflation and this current temporary market decline, the much bigger problem is the long-term effects of inflation. We must keep both the current inflation and market headlines in perspective. Here's how I discuss it in the book 3D Retirement Income. Inflation's Impact on Retirement Income Is your retirement principal safe if you run out of money? Is your retirement plan, which revolves around avoiding market losses, successful if you lose all your money to the rising cost of living? Calling your retirement portfolio safe simply because you won't lose money in a market crash is like calling a morbidly obese person healthy simply because they don't currently have the flu. Your lack of problems in the short term does not ensure your long-term success. Even if you have no short-term market losses, you can still run out of money. Even if you have no flu-like symptoms, you can still die of a heart attack. The principal problem is not protecting the retirement principal. The principal problem is creating a retirement income. Break the mindset of protecting your nest egg from market losses. This should not be your primary concern. Your mortal enemy is not a drop in the stock market over the next few years. Your mortal enemy is the rising cost of everything you need and want to buy over your lifetime. Inflation, the rising cost of everything we need and want to buy, is an insidious evil. It goes unnoticed in the short term. We rarely notice its effects month over month, even year over year. Especially during times of low inflation, it doesn't phase us. From 2011 through 2020, the average annual inflation was 1.73%. When, over the course of a decade, you see the price of a dollar menu item at McDonald's go from $1 to $1.18, you don't panic. It's not going to break the bank. Indeed, it would take 40 years for the prices to double at that pace. 
most people wouldn't have a problem if inflation remained at that rate. Over the average 30-year retirement, a dollar menu item would go up to $1.68. No problem. But we knew the good times couldn't last. We were all reminded that inflation still exists when it went from 1.4% in 2020 to over 6% in 2021. At 6% inflation, prices of everything will double in less than 12 years. Over a 30-year retirement, costs will sextuple. Your McDouble went from $1 to $6. Is your safe fixed income portfolio or fixed annuity going to keep up with that? Thankfully, no one expects 6% inflation will continue for 30 years. It won't because it can't. Price increases of that much for that long cannot be sustained. While we don't need to assume massive increases in prices, we cannot take the small changes we've experienced over the last decade for granted. Even before the price hikes of 2021, I've been warning about clients about the effects of inflation. Even at long-term historical rates of 25 to 3%, the prices of everything you want and need to buy will double, and perhaps triple, in your retirement lifetime. Sure, your fixed income portfolio can generate enough income to buy a $4 box of cornflakes. And perhaps you'll still be okay when the price is $5 and $6. But what about when it hits $8, $10, or even $12 per box? The effects of inflation are far more dangerous than a stock market decline. We're taught to fear market crashes, not inflation. Market crashes are significant events. They draw headlines and doomsayers. Every time it happens, people declare, the world is ending. This time is different. We won't get through this. The 24-hour news cycle loves market crashes. They won't let us forget them. They make them the worse by perpetuating the fear. There's a constant barrage of pundits and talking heads announcing the end of life as we know it. We notice when the market crashes. We see stock market indexes go down 20, 30, or 40%. And if we are invested in those stock funds, we see our portfolios lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. Crashes make noise. We notice. And we are taught to avoid them by investing in fixed income while in retirement. Inflation is quiet. We ignore. An increase from $4 to $4.12 doesn't make any headlines. We don't notice it. We don't fear it. But here's the critical difference. Stock market crashes are always temporary. Consumer price increases are always permanent. Let me say that again. Stock market crashes are always temporary. Consumer price increases are always permanent. Every time the stock markets have crashed, and it happens all the time, they have rebounded and reached new heights. Every single time. Equity markets will continue to crash. It happens once every five years on average. Common as dirt. You'll live through five or six crashes during a 30-year retirement, and two or three will be massive. They will always rebound. Equity market crashes are always temporary. When was the last time you saw prices come back down to stay? When Subway got rid of their $5 footlong, did they replace it with a $4 footlong? We may be happy that we are no longer chanting five, five dollar, five dollar foot long, but we aren't happy that a foot long is now eight dollars more. When prices rise, the increase is permanent. We can create a strategy to weather the temporary declines in stock markets, but there is no strategy for the temporary increases in prices because they're never temporary. We focus too much on protecting our retirement principle from temporary market declines. We focus too little on creating retirement income to outpace the permanent rise in prices. Billions of dollars are spent every year to encourage people's fear of temporary market declines and to solve that problem with fixed annuities, permanent life insurance, and other fixed products. The fixed products market is highly profitable for insurance companies and banks. They make those profits on the backs of people who are focusing on the wrong thing, protecting the retirement principle instead of creating a retirement income. This book will show you how to create an income strategy that will help you weather temporary market declines, but more importantly, it will help you defeat your mortal enemy. What can we do about it? Inflation is a cancer. It is going to take some fiscal chemotherapy to deal with it. Credit to Nick Murray for this analogy. The chemo is not fun. Rising interest rates are not fun. Mortgage rates under 3% were great 
And those now securing loans with 5 or 6% rates are not nearly as thrilled. Much has been said about how bad the market has been in the first half of the year. Headlines like, the worst start since 1928 and the worst half of a year since 1970 have grabbed our attention. But these entirely ignore the gains we've seen before this. Since the market bottomed out in 2009, we've seen 17.6% annualized compound returns. The average, again, is 10%. And in the three calendar years of 2019 through 2021, those compounded returns were 24% annually. If we must now temporarily give back a portion of those extraordinary advances to quell inflation, so be it and bring it on. Inflation must be destroyed, whatever it takes. If we must persist through a bear market, no problem. If we must delay buying or upgrading a home because we can no longer afford the increase, that's not the end of the world. If we must endure some temporary discomfort to ensure our futures aren't permanently damaged by the persistent, rampant inflation, then endure we must. The cure is not worse than the disease. Milton Friedman continued in his inflation analogy to alcoholism. When it comes to the cure, it's the other way around, he said. When you stop drinking or when you stop printing money, the bad effects come first and the good effects come later. That is why it is so hard to persist with the cure. The cure is not worse than the disease. We must persist and endure through these times so that inflation can die. What can I do about it? What can you do personally about what's going on? We have no control and little influence over macroeconomic issues. And if your only plan to deal with inflation is to hope that it will go away, that's a bad plan. So what can you do about it? Proactively plan to deal with inflation. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, your long-term investment strategy must be built first and foremost to combat inflation. This means having and sticking to an equity-based investment plan. People I know, who are not clients of mine, will ask me in times like these if I regret having my clients invest in equities now that they have sustained such heavy losses, quote-unquote. My response, not in the slightest. Questions like this reveal the persistent insistence on only looking at the very short term with no perspective whatsoever on the long term, past or future. That is a foolish and dangerous perspective. What matters is to have a strategy that will outpace inflation over the long term. And the average annual 10% return of equities outstrips both inflation and any other mainstream investment strategy of that long term. I would also gleefully point out, even over the short term, equities remain superior. Over the last two years, the total inflation, as opposed to the annual inflation, is what, about 10-12%? Maybe, if that. And what have your CDs wrought over that time? 1%? How about your bonds? Oh yeah, the total bond market index is down about 14% from two years ago. Are those holding up against inflation over that time? A resounding no. This inflation is destroying every other type of investment. Meanwhile, the total return of the S&P 500 over the last two years, ending June 2022, is still around 28%. Did you hear that? Equities are up 28% from two years ago, even while they are down. We could sustain a much deeper temporary decline in equities and still be above inflation. So what can you do? Have an equity investment plan and stalwartly stick to it. If you enjoyed that, you would love being part of our free membership community. It's called Retire Membership, and there's a host of benefits all for free. For example, you can always buy my book, 3D Retirement Income, on Amazon. But if you join us at Retire Membership, we will send you either a hard copy or paperback for free, provide the ebook and the audiobook so that you can listen to it if you don't have time to read it. In addition to that, we'll also provide you with a bunch of content that you can't get anywhere else. For example, we have our quarterly Retire Mentorship magazine. 
which comes out quarterly and has no ads whatsoever. It's just timely content to help you stay the course. We also have workbooks for our free online workshop to help you get the most out of those, flowcharts to help you make better decisions, and a weekly email to provide timely content that you can unsubscribe from at any time. We never ask for any payment information, and we never share your information with anyone else. We just want to provide timely content and help you stay the course to retire successfully and stay successfully retired. There's no reason to wait, so join us now at retiremembership.com, where you can click in the link in the description, and it'll go right there. We can't wait to see you in the community. Cheers. This podcast is educational only and is not investment, tax, or legal advice.